Hey, what's up guys? Lewis here with Fedivo, and today we're gonna to be checking out four low budget cinematography tips that you need to employ for your filmmaking if you are filming in a forest. Now, despite so many of our tutorials, at least what I'm hosting taking place in a forest, we're not doing so today. Uh, I don't feel too well, and I also injured my foot recently so I cannot walk around the house, let alone a forest. But thankfully, I have quite a number of video clips from old projects that have been shot inside of a forest. And equally, the Fedivo library is jam-packed filled with forest imagery from drone shots to couples hiking. So we have more than enough content for me to demonstrate the tips that I've picked up from the last 15 years of filmmaking. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so right now. And with that, let's jump in to tip one, which is gonna be talking about focal length. So I think it's only natural, right, to gravitate towards a, lot, a wide lens if you're filming inside of a forest. You're here to capture the luscious, organic shapes, colors, and textures that you're not gonna find in the city or a small town or even the beach. So why would you not gravitate towards a wide angle lens where you're gonna be able to capture all of that environment? And honestly, that would be my go-to choice. You're gonna to want to use a wide angle lens in order to capture uh, the varying degree of beauty within these locations. However, while a wide angle lens is gonna be my first choice, that doesn't mean I'm not gonna to go towards the telephoto because a telephoto lens in a forest can be just as equally compelling to use. So let's have a look at this shot. This is from a project from, shut the inspector, from um, 2014. It was shot on the Red One MX with a 150 millimeter lens. So the upper limit of telephoto lenses if you're using them in narrative circumstances. One of the core reasons why I like to use a telephoto lens in a forest is because of the different layers of the forest itself. You're gonna have trees, the branches coming down from the trees, the leaves, the plants, the flowers, the foliage, bushes, whatever it may be, all scattered throughout the forest in unconventional placements. As a result, as seen in this sequence here, and more so in this sequence, we have a number of different textures in the background, which is creating really interesting bokeh because you not only have the different shapes, for example, we have some um, thin tree branches coming up here. We've got some leaves moving in the background and then pockets of light where the sun is coming through. It creates a really interesting dynamic that you're just not gonna be able to obtain with a wide angle lens. And you're not gonna be obtain, not gonna be able to obtain this type of footage if you're filming in the suburbs of your town. You're really only gonna get this sort of shot in a forest with a telephoto lens. And it can create some really interesting shots where if you have something which might be conventionally boring, for example, here we have two bandits who are kind of giving each other a, a hard time after a failed robbery, you know, at a wide angle lens, while we are showing the environment, and I'm sure there's some thematic themes going along with that, using the telephoto, we've been able to give it this really nice looking image with the compressed layers of the forest in the background, creating interesting shapes and interesting textures throughout. So that is reason one as to why you should possibly think about using a telephoto lens in a forest. The second, is it may help you convey kinetic energy. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we think about a chase sequence in a film in a forest, you know, I think uh, Avengers Age of Ultron, uh, we have some scenes in that. Usually you would have a steady cam operator right up next to the talent running along with them in the forest to create that sense of urgency from the character's uh, viewpoint. However, if you're a low budget filmmaker, you might not have the equipment available um, for you to do that. Likewise, if you are a low budget filmmaker, I'm not going to advise running alongside someone in a forest with your camera, um, simply out of safety reasons. But if you have a telephoto lens, look what we can do here. This is a locked off shot with a 150 millimeter uh, lens. And we have a lot of kinetic action going on in the sequence, simply because of all of the textures and all of the layers quite like in a car sequence, a car chase sequence, and we have the cars whizzing past the scene, 
we've got that attribute, but it's from leaves and the branches and the trees. We've got like the from these characters running, when a matter of fact, it's just a very stationary shot, but the compression of the lens allows for these elements to whiz past the lens as if there's a lot of movement going on. And in fact, you know, if we um, activate this sniper layer, let me just get the inspector up so I can position this over a little bit. So look at this. So the sniper is looking for its target. Is that him? I think it is. Oh, he's been lost behind a tree. Is that him? Is that him going over? You know, there's a lot of like action and movement to this sequence, but the camera has not moved. What have I done here? Oh, there we go. The, the camera has not moved a single centimeter outside of panning and outside of using um, the telephoto lens. So really cool use of um, using a telephoto lens inside of a forest. All those layers are gonna make for some interesting uh, dynamic movement. Now, let's look at tip two. So I want you to look at this shot. This is from a, a project in 2021, I believe. And um, this woman has injured herself. She's injured her foot, quite like me at the moment, actually. <laughs> and um, yeah, so let's look at this shot. We're gonna go to this one. This is filmed in the same location, in the same forest. In fact, probably not too far away from where that actress was sitting. And then we're gonna to move to this shot, again, in the same forest, maybe uh, about two minutes away from where that, uh, that the actress was sitting. What's one thing that we can see that is different from all of these shots? So this is filmed at midday. That's filmed towards later evening. This is filmed probably early morning. It's the background interest. Now I've been able to paint the background with a number of pockets of light, as I like to call them. If you've ever watched, which is a silly thing to be saying, but when you watch, I should say, a, a television show, a scripted television show, or um, a narrative film, you will often know that in interior locations, even in daytime, the lamps in the background are on. There is no reason for those lights to be on other than to create some interesting background composition and to stop the composition from falling flat. Now, despite this being filmed in the same forest, and these two shots in particular were filmed on the same camera with the exact same lens, there is a vast difference between the visual um, aesthetic of the sequence. And it's primarily down to these pockets of light to, uh, let's get the annotation tool. These pockets of light appear in, in the background. It gives the image, quite frankly, uh, a, more visual in, uh, a more visually pleasing aesthetic over this and you know despite the fact that it is a wide angle lens and quite like the um telephoto segment there's different layers of of textures with with within the composition without those pockets of light the image itself and the composition falls relatively flat so what you're going to want to do is download um, an app i like to use photo pills i think it's a paid app I'm sure there are going to be free alternatives. And that app allows me to um, locate where the sun is going to be at any given environment. So if you've done a location recce to try and figure out where you're going to shoot, you simply pull out the app, figure out where the sun is going to be at a given time. And in doing so, you're going to be able to paint these pockets of light in a location which may otherwise, quite like these scenes, fall flat when you're working with a low budget and you're not able to emulate this light from film lights. So while we have this actress on screen, uh, we're gonna segue into section three because we're using the same actress, again, in the same forest. It's a very big forest, guys. Uh, I like to go there to film quite often. Um, this is from a project in 20, 2016. I'm not too sure I'm getting old. They fade throughout the years, but this character is hiking throughout the uh, forest, is thirsty, looks for her water, and instead finds the journal of a man who tried to kill her. Very ominous. However, I have made one gigantic mistake. This was completely on myself as a non-funded passion project at the time. Didn't really have the crew or the extra mindset to think about these things. 
here I made sure I didn't make the same mistake. Do you know what it is? Costume. Tip three is costume. Now, the role of the director and the role of the cinematographer, especially if combined, is to direct the audience gaze where it needs to be. Now, while we do have this nice little tracking shot, and of course the main character is within the center of the frame, the fact that not only is the character's skin tone very similar to the dried leaves on the floor as well as the tree bark, but the coat she's wearing is pretty much similar to the same hue of the leaves. Now, of course, we could probably go into the color page and if I go to hue first hue, let's pick that one, see if we can change it. You know, yeah, we could probably like give the leaves a little bit more of a yellow or maybe pick the woman's coat and change it to a blue. But that in itself presents like a wide variety of problems, which is just gonna be a major headache in post. In this sequence, in this composition, sorry, despite the fact that the lens, um, place, the camera placement, sorry, uh, as well as the focal length has the audience looking directly at the character, her costume does not allow the audience's gaze to, negate, to, to travel too far away from the main character. So they're receiving all the information that I, as a filmmaker, want to show to them. In this one, we're not getting the same result. It falls incredibly flat. And the one thing that I never want to see in the images I create is there, for, is there to be a lack of contrast. Now, in an ideal situation, I would have additional lights in order to separate the subject away, you know, maybe have some backlight from up here and um, allow this area to fall a little bit darker but this was a non-funded passion project. So the next thing that you would need to start thinking about is costume. And you know, it doesn't have to be as in your face as this red coat. If we have a look at this shot from the Fedivo library, we have a yellow backpack and a blue backpack, which are uh, opposing colors. Then we have um, the guys wearing a plaid red shirt and that looks like a pink checkered shirt. These colors, are not found within this frame. Although I guess you could say that yellow is likely somewhere within um, the hue of green down there, uh, which is illuminated by the sun. But for the most part, these colors are not found within the frame. As a result, what are we doing as the audience? We're following them and we're looking at what they're doing and where they're going. If they were wearing similar clothing as to this character, I bet it wouldn't have the same effect. Okay, so for the final tip, we're gonna talk about the direction of light. Now, the forest, quite like Golden Hour, is a great location where you have to have little investment into equipment in order to produce great results. It's why so many people love to film at Golden Hour. You arrive at location, hit record, and let nature do its thing. However, unlike Golden Hour, where you want your subject to be hit by the golden rays, in a forest, it's not so much more about where your subject is placed, but where the camera is placed. So where I would suggest is positioning the camera directly towards the sun. Here the sun is directly behind me, so it's about 11 o'clock. I'm gonna say half 11 at latest. Now we've got some nice natural side light coming down and hitting the um, side of my face as well as the jumper. And over here, if we zoom into my eye, we can see that I've got a bounce board. Now in using a bounce board, it's a lot easier as a solo filmmaker or a low budget filmmaker than using diffusion. Um, if you had to put up a scrim or to put up something in order to negate the harsh sunlight if the actor is facing towards the sun. So for example, this is a shot that I have from a project in 2016. Um, I love this shot, it hasn't been graded, so I'd probably bring down these highlights a little bit. However, as he's looking towards the sun, we run into these sort of problems quite often. He's being completely overexposed. And again, in this shot, this is uh, from, from the same project as earlier. Even though it's not too bad, if we were just to swap the characters around, so instead it's more like this, you're gonna be able to have them being illuminated by some backlight. And if they turn around and face the camera, quite like this scene with myself, you only need a bounce board 
in order to illuminate the subject correctly. Whereas here, I would need some uh, uh, diffusion silks, then I'm gonna have to have a C stand or two in order to hold that, or at least another person. And you know, it starts to become a lot complicated. So position your camera directly towards the sun rather than facing away or to the side. That's gonna create a nice tonal variety of shadows in, in your sequence, as well as um, allowing you to correctly illuminate your subject rather than having them overexposed. All right, guys, my name is Lewis with Fedivo. They have been my four low budget cinematography tips when filming inside of a forest. So let's run over those four. We've got using a telephoto lens to create interesting bokeh or to add kinetic energy if you are unable to move the camera in a forest environment. We've got use pockets of light in order to create interesting background um, aesthetics, making sure that your costume on the subject is in contrast to the location in order to make them uh, visually identifiable within the frame or at least uh, direct the audience's gaze towards them and not have it wander off throughout the frame. And then finally, have your camera facing towards the sun in order to have those shadows come across the forest floor to create interesting shapes, as well as having your characters illuminated by the backlight, which you can then accommodate with a bounce board rather than having to have to diffuse that strong sunlight. So if you've enjoyed these, give us a like, leave us a comment, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next week.